Suppose you have a set of requirements that mostly apply across several variants of an application. But in the different variants, some of the original requirements, as specified, don't apply at all, and all variants need some new variant-specific requirements to be defined. This can be a tough scenario to manage, but with Polarian's exclusive Live Branch feature, it's really no problem at all. Take, for example, a requirement specification document for a Tetris game, which describes specs for a Tetris clone for any mobile device. We can see it contains requirement type work items, which are managed by the project workflow. Let's look down through it and get a feel for how it looks, because we'll want to know this later on. We can see there's a logic flowchart, a board diagram, an illustration of game pieces, and then we get down into some granular requirements for the app. Suppose now that you need a variant of this specifically for Apple's iOS platform for phone and tablet devices. The requirements are mostly the same, but some from the main spec would be wrong for iOS, and some iOS-specific requirements will need to be specified. Even a simple scenario like this is clumsy to manage efficiently with multiple Word documents, even supposing nothing will ever change in the main specification, and we all know how likely that is. With Polarian, you can easily handle a platform-specific variant using Live Branch to branch the main or master document. You start by going to the Operations menu and selecting Branch. We'll go into the details of creating a branch document later. For now, let's look at one that we already branched for iOS. Here we are in a Live Branch variant of our Tetris for Mobile spec. We immediately see a variant title. That's simply because we changed it after creating the variant. We can easily see that by comparing with the master document. Again, go to the Operations menu and select Compare with Master Document. Right away we see a highlight that indicates the title was modified in the variant. Now we could scroll the entire view looking for other changes, but the most useful for us will be to know what work items changed in this variant. Switching to the Work Item view of the comparison will tell us that. We can quickly understand that some new work items were added to this variant and some of the items from the master were removed, meaning removed from the variant only, but not from the master. Let's exit the comparison and take a closer look at the work items in the variant document. As we look at the marked work items in the variant document, you can see the dotted left border. Now this is a critical thing to understand. Work items with this border are not contained in this variant document. They're contained in the master document. The items are simply referenced in this variant or branched document. If I try to edit a referenced work item, nothing happens. Referenced items are read-only in the branch. If we scroll down to the controls section, we can see there are some work items with a solid left border. These are native to this branch document. They were added to it and are contained in it. So they can be edited here, linked to other items, and so on, developed in the normal way. Right now, our branch is 100% live. That means any changes that occur in the master document will automatically propagate to this branched variant. That's great if that's what you want, but what if you don't? Let's see how you can control your branch. Let's suppose that our iOS devices will only support this grid of 200 cells. But the analyst developing the master spec may be looking further ahead and could specify some enhanced game board before we're ready to support it. We don't want any such change affecting our variant spec, at least not yet. So what we can do is to freeze this requirement to the current revision of the master document. To do that, click the work item icon and select freeze. Now you select the revision you want to be frozen to. We're seeing the latest revision and we want to stick to that, so select it, click OK, and then be sure to save the document. After saving, if you select the work item and look at its properties in the sidebar, you can see that it's currently frozen to the revision of the master document you selected. So what happens now if the item gets changed in the master? Here we are back in the master specification document. Since we saw it last, the spec is being changed. WI21 now specifies an enhanced grid of 12 by 20 for 240 cells. Let's finish that change and save the master. Now let's return to our iOS variant. Notice that the old 20 by 10 200 cell grid is still specified. Our variant was not affected 
by the master change. But now guess what? There's been an update to iOS and devices will now support the enhanced grid specified in the master. So all we need to do now is unfreeze this item. We go back to the icon menu, click freeze unfreeze, and take the unfreeze option. Notice that you do have the possibility to freeze to a different revision. Maybe the head revision is too far ahead of your development, but one later revision is what you want to support, so you can freeze your item to that later revision. But for now, we're going to unfreeze it entirely and be in sync with the master. Again, be sure to save to effect the change. Notice that the little clock icon is gone from the work item properties, meaning our branch document is once again live and in sync with the master. Let's wrap up with a quick look at how to create a live branch document. You start with having the document you want to branch open in your project. As we saw before, you go to the Operations menu and select Branch. The Branch Document dialog gives you a number of options, and I'm going to jump around a bit from the visual order. By default, you branch in the same project, but you don't have to. You can create a live branch variant document in any existing project, provided you have permissions in the target project to do that. We could have created a separate project for iOS specifications and branched the main spec there. You can do whatever works for you. For now, I'll just keep to the same project as the master. Space shows the space in which the variant document will be created in the selected project. The list shows the spaces that exist in that project. Again, I'll just keep to the default selection. Document. By default, you branch the current or head revision of your document, but you could branch an earlier revision by clicking on the button and selecting the desired revision. Once again, I'll keep things simple and just stick with the head revision. Finally, new document name. If you're branching into a different project or a different space, you can keep the document name. But I'm branching into the same project and space, so I need a new name. Let's say this is a branch for Android. Now click OK to create the variant, which will at first be an exact duplicate of the master at whatever revision you selected. All the work items are referenced and the branch is 100% live with no frozen work items. If any work item in the branch doesn't apply to the variant, click on its icon and select Remove. This simply removes the reference from the variant and the master document is completely unaffected. You can then add new work items in the branch document in the normal way. See our tutorial on creating live docs to learn more about that. Although we've looked at a pretty simple example, our Tetris game and its variants could just as easily be a passenger jet aircraft with different interior configurations or a cardiac monitor device with different electronic components for different countries. Hopefully this introductory tutorial will get you thinking about applications in your own organization. If you have questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at <laughs>